Okay, we are live. The debate will start till one. Okay. So I'm going to fill that out with everyone's name. Right here on this one, it's like this. And we'll go And um, currently, you. Okay. Can, so we are live. Before can, you can, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, now tell them that you can't hear them. I can't hear you. Oh. Uh, we can hear you. I can hear you. Let's see what is this here? I can hear you. Turn camera audio. Can you hear me? Uh, Let me type a banner in. We can hear you. Right, the volume is up. Okay. Okay, so all right, so we're gonna leave and come back in. Okay. Um, was um, was uh, Professor Hannick, wasn't he the American the Solidarity Party candidate? Yes. Yes, he was. I knew it. I don't know. So, how, how have you been since the last time we saw each other? Uh, good. I'm out in Fresno. We are just trying to survive the heat. And, I was... Uh, I was I was literally in Fresno the other day. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, I, I stopped by there on my way back from San Francisco. Well, you know, if you're ever down, stop by and I'll take you to uh, coffee. Also, if you're uh, a cuisine guy, um, uh, then uh, I'm sorry. Someone is joining the debate right now. Give me one second to handle this. Sorry. Oh, that's not it. That's not it. Okay, let me do it this way. Um. Yes. Hello. Marcus, this is Lewis. Lewis Wong. Lewis Wong. Hey, I just saw your email, and I am trying to. I'm just going to email you a link right now. I saw your call, and uh, what is your email? Is Lewis at Lewis Wong for Irvine? Uh, with the M. All right. Give me one second. Oh, no, Let me no, double no, check. Sorry, 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 sorry. No, no, no. That's not my personal email. I can I can use it with another one. Uh, Lewis Wong. Sorry, Lewis. Lewis Wong, number four, Irvine.com. Done. Sending it to you right now. Awesome. And uh, it's something I can do for my phone, right? Correct. Perfect. And in the stream yard, I think? Yes, sir. Perfect. Okay. Uh, we, got, we got a couple of other gentlemen joining us? Yes, sir. Okay, so you All right, thanks. It's a live stream now, so if you come on it, you can see the other candidates. We're not starting till one, but we're asking everybody to come in until one, and then I'll, I'll do the mock up based on. Yeah. I'm literally setting up my right now. I'll see you soon, brother. This is the link. Okay. Okay, great. We got another candidate. Awesome. So I'll be right the door if you need anything. Okay. Make sure this is working. Got yeah, right, Marcos. You saw my tech support. <laughs> of course, I wish I had one of those signs like Mr. Drake has. Hey, thanks. Thinking ahead, thinking ahead. I, dude, they're Just all over. Fire. They're all over um, San Francisco, my town, and uh, Thousand Oaks. I've just been busy. I've just been going out there, just been giving people them them signs. Uh. I'm going to turn off a fan here. I've been using it successfully to dissipate hot air. Uh. That's what goes. That actually, I probably should do the same. Joe, Joe, is the sound all the way up? Okay. You want the sound high? 
I'll show uh, uh, this, this photo, I don't hear him. SP, I don't hear him very well. If he A-K-S-P-I-V. A-K-S-P-I-V. So your, your volume is up high. Okay. Are you able to hear Marcus pretty yeah. well? Are you okay. able to hear Johnny too well? And Elias. Oh, is my is my volume not working well? Okay. So it's good. It's good. I can hear you just fine, yes. John. Yes, You're okay. Fine. Sweet. Okay. So. Marcos, you notice the new uh, necktie? You look nice. I did notice that. Uh, I mean, hey, I always told people to come as you want, but dress up, you know, you look better. And look at that. That's blue and gold. That's California colors there, Professor. Must, must, I see must what you're doing. somebody's colors. I see what you're doing. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. That's hot. Uh, yeah. So we have um, uh, some good questions by a couple of reporters who have been um, asking a few questions. And... We're going to ask some of those. Uh, John Drake, you're, you're going to miss out on a lot of background noise that used to come from me. <laughs> but with tech support from my oldest son, it's a different story today. Oh, man. People went so far, John, people went so far as to suggest that somebody kept flushing the toilet. <laughs> that's the kind of scurrilous debates we've been having. Uh, that's funny. Um, wait, how, how old is your son? That particular son is almost 50. Oh, okay. My, my birth mother is 37, so <laughs> very, very young. Why, 37, you're halfway to heaven at 37. <laughs> Unless you're Marcus, and then you got to get a lot older before you're going to be halfway to heaven. <laughs> I guess, I guess, um, can I ask you something, Professor? Okay, Sorry. sweet. Uh, can I ask you something? All right, so... Um, Back in 2019, I learned about the American Solidarity Party. Oh, oh. I learned about it um, because because I was trying to find what party best suited me. Um, we're, we're the ones. Yeah. And, 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 we're, we're yeah. yeah, yeah it, it, literally, it was the party that, that best suited me um, because I did like a political test. Like it was like 300 something questions and whatever. So like what made you join the party, if I may ask? Well, it was the stipend. <laughs> when, when I would teach philosophy as I did for many a year every once in a while at the beginning of a course somebody would say now why, why are you into philosophy and I'd all say for the money <laughs> I said I was too nervous to steal and too ashamed to beg <laughs> wow well, wow. I, I have held the core ideas of the party since I was in high school. Insofar as I grew up, <laughs> it was at the Catholic Worker, and the Catholic Worker has been associated since it started with something called distributism. Since it started, it's been associated with nonviolence since it started it's been associated with community and, and uh, I guess I could call a bridge social capital and uh, Dorothy Day who was actually a suffragette never voted and they said well, why did you never vote and she says I haven't found a candidate worth voting for yet translation none of the candidates really represented the position that she held. And I like to think that today if she were around, she'd vote for us. Ah, yeah, no. Yeah, I feel that. I feel that most politicians are begrudgingly elected. 
the lesser of many evils. Mm -hmm. Lewis, uh, we can't see you or hear you. Um, you have to uh, allow your mic and uh, video. Ah, oh, there you go. I'm here. All right, here. nice. We're still yeah, warming just up. setting up. That guy's, a, from, that hello, guy's gentlemen. from Irvine. That guy's from Irvine. Where one of my sons graduated two years ago. Ask him anything about anteaters. He'll tell you. Isn't that right, Lewis? He's in denial. All right, we have a few more people coming. We'll just wait a few more minutes. Pardon me while I uh, send out some video. Ah, there we go. I'm just going through and making sure everybody gets one last minute reminder. Everybody was informed. I want to make sure. I always try to make sure we like double check and triple check and overwhelmingly remind. So nobody's like, I didn't know. You didn't tell me. Okay. Oh God. That's the last thing you want. Okay. I, 
I believe I reinformed a group of people. Uh, and we'll go from there. We will be starting live at one o'clock. Here's a message from Jason Wright. That's the Yes California Bay Area Regional Coordinator saying thank you all for participating. Uh, well, I got some good outfits here. Uh, Lewis, I like the matching thing. John, you look very slick. Uh, kind of like uh, modern um, uh, minimalist uh, kind of Ikea look going there. I like that. I got to uh, tell John, I got to tell John up front, there's no English word that rhymes with purple. Don't try Snapple. Don't try Circle. I want a real rhyme with purple. You won't find it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my. Circle? No, circle doesn't rhyme with purple. No, it doesn't. You could get by with it in some poems. Mm hmm. Urkel, that's a name. Purple, Urkel. Eh. Werfel? This isn't Scrabble. <laughs> Uh, now you see that Lewis guy there, he, he just finished up at Irvine where one of my sons was. <laughs> and their mascot is the ant eager. Oh. Yep. Yeah, look at him. He, he admits it. Zot, zot, zot. Where's everyone coming from? I'm from Ventura. I'm from out there. <laughs> you hear about the petici petition on uh, Jeff Bezos? 41,000 people have signed a petition saying if he leaves for space, he can't come back. Ah, well, you know what? Honestly, I would, best of luck to that, I, I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> can't afford giving his um, workers a livable wage, but he can definitely afford a trip to space. That's fun. Who, 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 gets, who gets to keep his billions? Uh, I think there are a number of people lined up. Who, 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 who gets, who gets... Okay, good. We're streaming. We're going out live. Everybody has it. We will wait a few more minutes. We will be starting at 1 o'clock sharp. I will walk everybody through the format. We'll do a commercial, then I'll explain the format of the debates, and then we'll launch into the debates, and it will be, we will be stopping at 3 p.m. Matt Mickelson should be joining us shortly. I also uh, re every candidate, about 20 of them, were invited to this particular forum. It, it is Father's Day, I will point out. That might be an issue, uh, but they were invited and whoever shows up, and we will continue to have these events for. Um, happy Father's Day, everyone. Happy Father's Day, everybody. Thank happy you. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> is, I, is anybody a father here other than uh, Hannick? I'm not. John, are you a father? Nope. Lewis, are you a father? I'm taking that as a no. So, Professor, yeah, I mean, how many kids? You have like three kids? Six. Six? Nice. Wow. Every That's day I say, okay, you six, go up, pick up sticks. <laughs> I can't help it. When I first started telling jokes, my wife said, I think you have a brain tumor. Oh, Somebody did an eye roll there. Did you see that eye roll, Marcus? That's pain. Oh, wow. Dr. Wade is here. All right. Frank Henry, can you hear me? Uh, yes. yes. Can right, you great. hear me? Yes, sir. 
Yes, I, I can hear you. Okay. I'm using first names. It helps me to keep track. I'm going to load everybody's name into a random list generator. I got to warn you, Frank. Marcus has been calling me public. On the list, Frank James. Okay, we will be starting in two minutes at one o'clock. The candidates right now are Lewis Wong, John Drake, Professor James Hannock, Professor Frank Henry Wade. Matt Mickelson said that he would be here. We will give people two more minutes to show up to the debate. And we will get started. I will launch with a commercial that will start that the debate has started. I will then launch into the uh, instructions for this debate. Every candidate will know what the, what the process is. I'll make sure everybody understands what's going to happen. No tricks. And then we'll actually launch the debate. The debate should last no more than about an hour and 50 minutes. We have questions today from the Times of San Diego and three different reporters, Tom Elias, uh, Joshua Spivak, and Diane Herman. Drivers, if you're available and want to go to the airport, the airport says they need cabs. There's no cabs at the airport right now. Just Sorry. Uh, just to get down the background noise, some of you might have to mute occasionally just so that when people are speaking, they have a clean feed. Okay, we have about one more minute for people to join. Um, I'll give Matt Mickelson a, a few minutes exception just because I've been trying to work with him. But uh, people got about two or three more minutes, and then we're going to start. And if they're here, they're here, and if they're not, we're getting started with them. So, wait a few more minutes. I would like Mr. Nicholson to join us. I just posted. Never mind. Few more people joining. I want to give them just a few minutes. Ah, oh, Matt Nicholson is here. He'll be joining us. Normally, I would start at one because it's Father's Day. I'm going to give a few extra minutes for people to join in. I hope the candidates do not view this as being disrespectful. Just want to make sure everybody gets in here. And I understand trying to keep the schedules afloat uh, on this holiday and make time for the debate. Matt Mickelson was just here, so he's here on time, but he's trying to uh, log back in. As we all know, there's some tech issues we deal with. So I'm going to mark Matt Mickelson as. Oh, there you are, Matt Mickelson. How can you? How can you hear us? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Real quick test. Um, I'm going to call your name. Just say a few words. Just so everyone can hear, just confirm everybody can hear each other. John. Up. Oh. James. Jim. Matt. I hear you. Frank. Frank. Uh, hello. Great to see you. Lewis. Uh, yes. Uh, hello. Great to be here. All right. Okay. We're doing pretty damn. We're doing pretty good. <laughs> Uh, we will start in about two minutes. There were two other candidates that said they would be able to make it. I want to give them a minute. Normally, we start right on time at 1 o'clock because it is Father's Day. We're making a slight allowance. I'm going to give two more minutes for additional candidates to be here. We will be starting in two minutes. We will start with the commercial from Yes, California. Then we will go into instructions for the debate. I am the moderator. I will walk all of you through the debate, the format, what's expected of everybody. Largely, it'll be a two-minute opening statement 
where you can cover however you'd like to introduce yourself. We will then launch into questions from reporters Tom Elias, Joshua Spivak, and Diane Herman with the hopes that we can get those fed into the news. And then we will finally go to questions from the Times of San Diego, the only mainstream publication, to do a recall candidates debate. So we're going to do three reporter questions. Then we're going to go to Times of San Diego questions. These questions come from reporters and from the news. Our hope is that by you answering them, you'll slip into what we call the media stream, meaning that both you get publicity and we get publicity. Win-win for everybody. That's why we're doing it. Reputable questions from reputable sources. We'll give it about one more minute for people to chum in, and then we will get started. We'll do two-minute introductory statements for everybody. I will walk you through the questions. Everybody will be allowed to answer the questions, and there will be proper time for everybody. <laughs> Okay, we're going to get one more minute for any other candidates to show up, and I will just start with the uh, commercial, and we will get going. It's a right. it's an honor to be with uh, all you gentlemen. Let's have a let's have a fun and lively uh, discussion. Thank you. I would encourage the candidates to respectfully <clears throat> address each other in your comments. The public seems to like that, but I cannot insist that you do that. What? So, say the hey, public loser. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're going to be respectful. <laughs> Call each other's names, being respectful. Yes, mm. you, I would encourage that. But so you don't have to, and some people already have ideas on what they want to say, and it's more important for them to get that point out. It's your call. Okay, we're gonna go right to the stream now. We are gonna get started. I'm gonna launch the commercial. We will be coming out. Hello, Fuji. Let me unmute you. I unmuted you. You have to unmute yourself, sir. You have to unmute yourself. Okay, yes, hello everybody. Hello, John, James, Louis, uh, Dr. Frank Wade, and Matthew and Luis Marinelli. Hello. Hello. Okay, let me have the names here. Matt, Craig. Uh, okay, uh, let me mute everybody just to get the reverb off. Um, I'm sorry, it's hard for me to tell who's uh, has background, so just to make sure your audio is coming in clean. So here is the people who are participating, Lewis, John, James, Matt, Frank, Lewis, and Fuji. Uh, give me one second here to load this into the random number generator, uh, which is how we are going to pick the order of the candidates. I don't even have any power over this, only you do. One second, I appreciate your patience. Okay, and all right. The order that the candidates are gonna be asked questions is based upon this. I loaded all of your names into a random number generator. I don't even have control. I'm sorry, let me let someone into the stream. I loaded all of the candidates' names into a random number generator. The order candidates will be asked questions will be John, Frank, Lewis, Matt, Fuji, Lewis, and James. I don't have control. That was from a random number generator. We're going to be doing questions from three different reporters and the Times of San Diego. We will begin now. Thank you. Uh, Marcus, sorry. Uh, what number am I? Uh, there's two Lewises. So you are L-U-I-S, Luis, and Luis Marinelli is L-U-I-S. So uh, Luis Marinelli, you are second to last, and Luis Wong, you are third. Thank so you. Both of you one of you has a U and the other doesn't. So, John, you're first. Frank, you're next. 
Lewis Wong, your third. Matt Mickelson, you will be fourth. Then we will go to Fuji as fifth. Lewis Marinelli is sixth. Then James is seventh. We will go in order for the questions. Let me get started. I'll walk everybody through the details. Thank you for being here. This is the seventh in our series of recall candidate debates hosted by us here at Yes. We are proud to do this. Give me one second to mute all microphones so there's no reverb. I apologize. Hello and welcome to the recall candidate debates. We've had seven of these. We are proud to do these. We are in contact or are in participating with half of the declared candidates for the 2021 recall candidate debates. We've also done internal surveys of all candidates and about 99% of them have said that we were fair. Uh, recently, we were able to get these debates listed on Wikipedia and I would encourage everybody to look at the 2021 gubernatorial recall election on Wikipedia. You will find that there are more liberals participating in this debate than conservatives, which contradicts the mainstream media narrative. Draw your own conclusions. Today, we will be hosting questions from reporter Diane Herman of the Independent Sentinel. Joshua Spivak, a recognized expert on the recall elections, routinely called on by the Washington Post, New York Times, CNN, and MSNBC, in addition to a special privileged guest, Tom Elias, the reporter that actually started the 2003 recall, uh, has agreed to give us a question for this debate, and Mr. Elias has now agreed to host a debate with Yes California when the conditions by Secretary of State Weber are released for the filing fee. Tom Elias, the person who helped get the 2003 recall election going, will be hosting recall candidate debates with Yes California and confirmed yesterday that he would do that. He will only be participating in the debate for people who have paid the $4,000 filing fee. So it'll be a bump up in recognition for everybody and you can be tied to the guy who started the 2003 one. Yes, he confirmed on doing that, and we are proud to bring that to you. Today, we have a selection of great candidates. Uh, I'm gonna remove the banner just so that you can see their names. John Drake, James Hennig, Louis Wong, Matt Mickelson, Fuji Shiora, Louis Marinelli, and Frank Henry Wade. The order of the candidates, picked by a random number generator, will be John, Frank, Louis, Matt, Fuji, Luis, Marinelli, and then James. Every candidate will be asked the same question. Each candidate will have a minute and a half to answer each question before we go to the next candidate. If you mention another candidate, as soon as you are done, we have to give that candidate a minute to respond. You do not have to mention other candidates, but if you do, they get a minute to respond immediately after you're done to whatever you said before we go to the next person. Again, straightforward questions. Everybody will be asked the questions. You will be asked in the format that you see below that was chosen by a random number generator. Three of the questions come from reputable reporters. The other questions will come from the Times of San Diego, which is the only mainstream source to do a recall candidates debate forum. In order to get started, to be fair, we allow each candidate a two-minute opening statement to present themselves however they would like. We will follow it <clears throat> in the order from the random number generator, and that will start with John. A, let me unmute your mic. You are unmuted. How would you like the people of California to see yourself in two minutes, sir? So my name is John Drake. I am... I am a college student from Ventura, California, and I come from a family of small business owners. And, I, and um, I've seen the um, I've seen the effect the California state government has on little uh, on small businesses. I've seen I've seen their inaction when it comes to health care, uh, uh, student loan debt. I've seen uh, their neglect for the environment. I've seen their neglect of the poor or the homeless. We have a massive homeless problem even in Ventura. And I think that the reason uh, why this is is because in Sacramento, they prioritize rich and corporate and, and corporate interests over that of the average Californian. It's easy to basically brush them aside and ignore them. And that's what they've done for the past five decades. And I'm hoping that possibly somehow 
through this um, recall or even in 2022, which, I'll, which I will also be running in, someone will give me a chance to actually attack, uh, actually attack um, Sacramento politics head on. Thank you. I'm, done. I'm sorry, John, that wasn't for you. You have oh. another oh. seconds. I apologize. Oh, Please you're good. Me. Well, it's cool. It's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I'm good. Okay, let's go to the next person. The next candidate to speak for what, up to two minutes will be <clears throat> Frank. Let me unmute you. Frank, you are unmuted. How would you like to be seen by the people of California in less than two minutes, sir? Okay, um, <clears throat> I want the people to see me as, as a, a professional person and college professor. I've had I'm the most qualified CPA that you can find. I have all the accounting qualifications, CIA, CMA, CISA. I have a uh, two. Uh, I have one doctorate in business administration from Golden Gate University. I'm working on my second doctorate in organizational leadership from the University of Phoenix. And I have 40 years of international and domestic uh, management experience and running businesses. And um, I have 10 years of college. Now, this is a great opportunity for the people of California. People like me do not enter in politics. We're usually kept occupied by academic or by business. But I was thrown out of Bangladesh. They took my visa away. They said because of the U.S. government was taking visas from Bangla people and the Muslim ban, uh, which caused my visa to be removed. And I had to come back. So now I'm driving a cab and trying to get back over to a university to work. But in the meantime, I see a great need to improve the state because of the uh, reckless and um, wrong ways of uh, dealing with the problems by our current governor. But I won't enter. In, I've never been in politics and I won't enter in politics in the future. This is a one time only opportunity for someone of my caliber to help the state. And I have a great experience in leadership and, um, and uh, the academics and accounting to, uh, to pull this off. Thank you, Professor. Next up will be Lewis Wong. Lewis, how would you like to introduce yourself? You have two minutes. Candidate Lewis Wong. Hola, mi amo Luis. Uh, nice to meet all the amigos and amigas. Uh, ni hao, dai ga ho. Um, my name is Lewis, Lewis Wong. Uh, I am uh, the gentleman running for governor with a brownish tar tan complexion uh, with a Asian sounding last name and with a uh, Espanol sounding first name. <laughs> so if we're talking about demos, I'm hitting a, a lot of the groups here. Uh, I'm 34, uh, born and raised in uh, California all my life. Uh, San Francisco, public school uh, education, UC San Diego, electrical engineering, solar, blah, 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 enough about myself. I am a democratic socialist. I am inspired by Bernie Sanders. I am inspired by everything that socialism stands for. I am inspired by all the socialist policies because at the end of the day, it is very simple. Socialism at the, at the root of it, free college for all, uh, lowering taxes for income, in, in income inequality, racial injustice. We're talking about helping families. We're talking about helping people. And that is what attracts me most. I ran for mayor. I am, I have experience running political campaigns. Uh, as the gentleman uh, mentioned earlier, I ran for mayor of Irvine and spoiler, I, I didn't win, but I came in third place running on zero dollars because my message resonated with families here in conservative Irvine. And I think there's so much we can be doing if we lower taxes for everyone here and raise taxes on billionaires and corporations and commercial property owners. Louis Wong, Democratic Socialism for California. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go to Matt next. 
you are, when I click the Unmute button, uh, you should be unmuted. Are you unmuted, Matt Mickelson? Matt Mickelson? Um, I, the button is unresponsive, and Matt Mickelson's feed is unresponsive. We will come back to him. I'm sure he will rejoin the feed. We're going to go now to Fuji. Fuji, please introduce yourself yes. to the audience for a few minutes. Hello, hola, shalom, salam, konnichiwa, namaste, niho. And, you know, my name is Fuji, F-U-J-I. Family, unity, justice, and integrity. There's a lot of people running, and I'm so proud to be here with talented candidates. And now more than ever, we need choices, and I'm one of your choices. And so are Luis Marinelli and John Drake and Professor Wade and, and Louis Wong and, you know, Professor Hannock. These are amazing people. And Matthew, I think his last name, it's amazing when we have more choices. When we have more choices, it's important. And I'm dedicated to be your next governor to make sure one of my top priorities is to have a election integrity. That means combating, confronting voter suppression, voter disenfranchisement that has existed for many, many decades in many different forms. I'm, I have a background in technology. I'm also believe in school of choice. I'm also your pro-life candidate. I have a campaign website called www.governor.life. I'm a pro-life candidate because it's a moral issue for me. But likewise, just as important, I understand what's important on our domestic policies as well as foreign policy that has a direct impact on the quality of life. Now more than ever, as you can see, I'm ready to get the job done. I'm out here handing out cards, meeting people, and really debating and sharing ideas. I'm a native born San Diegan, born in San Diego, and I'm proud to be here for you. And I'm also one of the few candidates that is currently an elected official that will say our state government is in dire need of new people across the board. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna go back to Matt Mickelson. Matt Mickelson. A two-minute opening statement, sir. How would you like the people of California to see you in two minutes, Good day. sir? Good day, and thank you. Name is Matthew Mickelson. I was born and raised in Southern California. I have three degrees, UC Berkeley, Northwestern University. I have a law degree from UCLA. I've had my own practice in lawyering for 15 years. I've been practicing for 22 years. I'm a trial lawyer. I'm an appellate lawyer. I work for the little guy, mostly against the big guy. The big guy. Politically, I was the president of the Federalist Society at, at uh, UCLA. I supported the Prop 209 campaign back in the 90s. None of that is really relevant. I haven't heard so far the main elephant in this room, which is the lockdowns, the mask mandates. We are in a situation in which I believe we are sleepwalking toward catastrophe. We've had an elite here, a political elite, at least that's what they call themselves, that believes that they are smarter than us, better than us, more virtuous than us. They ordered the destruction of hundreds of thousands of businesses. They ordered shutdowns and mandates far in advance, far more severe than anything in American history up to this time. And they expect to continue in office. By that, of course, I mean Newsom. But there's an entire political class behind it. We are faced with an entire corporate class, an oligarchic class, and a media class. They all work together in concert. Unless someone agree, someone understands those facts, they're not going to go anywhere. That's what I am trying to point attention to in this campaign. And I hope that people will understand that because if you don't understand that, you're not gonna go anywhere. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We're now gonna go keeping with the order. We're gonna to go to Louis Marinelli. Mr. Candidate Arnelli, in two minutes, how would you like to introduce yourself to the world's fifth largest economy? Well, thank you, Marcus. First, I'd like to do a sound check. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. 
Well, my name is Louis Marinelli. I am one of the two original founders of the modern day California independence movement. It's known around the world as CalExit and uh, the first chairman and founding chairman of the California National Party. And I'm currently the representative of the Independent Republic of California's movement in Moscow, Russia, where we have an embassy and culture center representing California values. I'm from San Diego. I'm currently living in Moscow, although myself and my family are on our way back home once everyone gets their immigration documents. My daughter, who was just four months old this month, received her U.S. citizenship just this week, so I'm very proud to say about that. I'm running on a platform, as you might imagine, of making California an independent country. If I'm elected governor, I will declare California to be an independent country. That is the... Uh, central theme of my platform, although I do have many other things that I believe in, and I think the people of California deserve to know what they are. In 2016, out of San Diego, I ran for state assembly. I was the first candidate in California history to run for state assembly on the platform of California independence. I ran as a Bernie crack, so I do have many policy positions that uh, I guess you could label progressive or liberal, but I also have several uh, platform positions that are Republican and conservative, so I'm a mixed bag. That's why I say I'm not a Democrat, I'm not a Republican, I'm not running as a Democrat, I'm not running as a pure Republican, I'm running as a Californian who believes that California needs to secede from the Union, become an independent country. Throughout the course of this debate today, I plan to lay out the reasons why and how we're going to achieve that goal and make California uh, the best place we can. We want to achieve two basic goals, one of which is to lower the cost of living in California, and the other is to raise the quality of life in California both of which I believe we can achieve through independence. You can visit my website at calexitgovernor.com. Thank you. Let's go to James. James, how would you like to introduce yourself to 40 million people as their next potential a top executive? Well, I'm Jim Manning. I'm from Inglewood. And with two NFL football teams, it's become Concussion City. My wife and I just celebrated our 53rd wedding anniversary. We have six children, some of whom appreciate dad jokes. Our family, like our neighborhood, is racially diverse. Why am I running for government? I'm doing so to advance the platform of the American Solidarity Party. Our party is real, it's growing, and it's pro-life for the whole of life. We're neither conservative nor liberal, neither capitalist nor socialist. Our party is, however, progressive in the best sense. We want to make progress for the common good built on solidarity, subsidiarity, and economic democracy. My qualifications? I'm not a politician or a policy wonk. But I do have experience for the past 45 years I've been a California resident. It's a state that once reflected the American dream and now exports a time of spring. I taught philosophy for 40 years at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. Now I'm redirected. Of late, I've been hosting the Open Door podcast and blogging for the new Oxford Review. I invite you to follow my campaign. You won't find slick mailers or see TV adverts, much less hear my toilet, so won't be in. Plus, there will be no pandering to identity politics. My one and only constituency is the human person. Whatever he or she, wherever he or she lives in this conflicted state. I also have a promise to make. Today's political talk is in need of correction. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you have heard from all the candidates how they would like themselves to be seen by you in California. We're going to go right to the questions. Questions will be asked of every candidate. <clears throat> you will have a minute and a half to respond. After one minute, I'm going to hold up three fingers. That means you have 30 seconds left. So if you see three fingers, that means you got 30 seconds left. I will be doing a hard stop at a minute and a half simply because we have so many people and to make sure there's time for everybody. I apologize. So 
You get a minute and a half. After one minute, it's going to be, hey, three fingers. You got 30 seconds. After that, I will end your, your video, your audio. You will go to the next person. I apologize. We have seven candidates, lots of questions. Want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to be heard. Thank you for your flexibility. So let's go right now to the first question. The first question is by reporter Tom Elias. Tom Elias uh, has known Yes California since at least 2014. He also started the 2003 recall election attempt with an article about Gray Davis. Uh, I don't think he intended the recall to happen, but he seems to start it off. And he certainly is one of the most informed reporters at the time. He's been following and reporting on this 2021 recall. And his question to the candidates is this, why do you think you would do better than Governor Newsom? So we're gonna start with John. John, in a, no more than a minute and a half, why do you think you do better than the current governor? Well, I would say it's simple, really. I'm not from Los Angeles, or but I'm not a time millionaire belonging to some sort of political or financial elite dynasty. Many of the politicians that I know, especially within the executive branch, especially for the past five decades, have all been either from San Francisco or Los Angeles, and and have had multi and have had millions of dollars behind them um, in their personal lives. Ronald Reagan, Gary Brown, Ronald Schwarzenegger, Gavin Newsom, every single one of them has been a multimillionaire. And and so someone like me who comes from a real average California background, who actually understands what uh, what the policies that exist do to average Californians, I experience it every day. I experience it every year. And I know and I know how it drives people out of the state. I know the suffering it causes people because I see it. I'm not in a gilded palace um, void of, of, of seeing uh, these people suffering. So I think that's what makes me much better than him. Um, everyone... I'm, I'm not bought. I'm running my own campaign, even as a college student. It's expensive, but that makes me that much more eager to actually want to help Californians. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will go to Frank. Frank, you are unmuted in a minute and a half. Why do you think you can do better than the current governor? Frank, right. a question. Well, the uh, big thing is that I'm from a, uh, uh, a working class family. My parents were workers. My dad was 45 years the manager of a mortuary in San Francisco. My mom was 40 years a teaching kindergarten in the San Francisco public schools. I identify with the majority of the people in the state. I'm not an elite Mr. Gavin Newsom is an elite. He doesn't have the money, but he's been bankrolled by the six major families of San Francisco in his enterprises, in the Balboa, then restaurants and bars that he opened and all of his campaigns. He's never had to work a day of his life. He is the Marie Antoinette of uh, California politics. He he danced at the French restaurant while the rest of us starved and suffered out here, having the businesses destroyed by now earlier. We talked, uh, Mr. Nicholson talked about an elite class. I don't believe there's an elite class. I just believe that Gavin Newsom is the elite. The other ones, uh, I know Diane Feinstein was a three time loser for mayor. Uh, she, is, she is not an elitist. Um, Nancy Pelosi came from a working class family. Her, her dear father was the squeaky clean mayor of Baltimore. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. I apologize. We have to keep it to a minute and a half to make sure everybody gets the same amount of time. Thank you, Matt. The next, that question is going to be now going to, sorry, one second, reset. The question goes to Louis Wong. Louis Wong, in a minute and a half, why are you better than the other candidate? Louis, you have to unmute yourself. Louis, you have to unmute yourself. Louis Wong, you have to unmute yourself to answer. Okay, Louis Wong, in a minute and a half, why do you think you could do wow. better than Gavin? Uh 
that was a that was an amazing answer. Yeah, I just uh, I wanted to acknowledge uh, I I I, I love the passion of uh, the previous answer. Here's my answer. I believe truly that each and every one of us here have the potential to be better than Newsom for governor. I truly believe that the, we need to get rid of all the politicians and we have regular average Joe's Americans, red, you know, red-blooded Americans, you, me, everyone here to be in public office in, in service because politicians are only in it for themselves. Doesn't matter the party, doesn't matter about anything else. They are just in it for themselves, for the ego, for whatever reason. But here's my answer. I will be better because I believe firmly in socialist ideals. Newsom is not a socialist, I, I assure you, the, 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 regardless of what other people say. Medicare for all, we can have Medicare for everyone, everyone here, it can be done uh, similar to workers comp. It can be uh, like similar to unemployment benefits run by EDD. Uh, just a small two to 4% increase on everyone's income taxes. We can have that free public ed education, free college education. Uh, let's increase the minimum wage. Let's increase taxes on corporations and billionaires and the really wealthy. We can do a lot of amazing Thank things. You. Thank you so much, Louis Wong. Thank you. We're going to go to Matt Mickelson. Matt Mickelson, in a minute and a half, why do you think <clears throat> you could do better than Governor Newsom? Um, that is the question from reporter Tom Elias, who was tied to the 2003 recall. Matt Mickelson. Thank you. It would take days to explain all the things that Newsom has, gone, has done wrong and the things that have gone wrong in this state. But the main issue as it always has been, and has been developing over the last 50 years, but is crystallized now, is the fact that Newsom and his class have implemented at first, at the first sign of, of danger, the weapon of tyranny. And that's frankly what it was to shut down the state in the way that he did. Uh, what we need to do, and someone like me, if they got an office would do, would use freedom as the first weapon of choice against any ill that happens to come up. It's crucial that someone actually believing in getting the uh, this class off of our uh, necks, off of our backs, <coughs> is placed in charge, at least in one office in this state. We would be insurgents, honestly, taking over even the governorship, but it's a, but it's a start. And that is the main issue of why Newsom has caused so many problems and why uh, I would do better. Thank you. Thank you, short and succinct. Next up is Fuji. Let me unmute you. Thank you. Fuji, why Thank did you, you do Thank you. Than you so? Well, there's a lot of reasons. One most important reason is I'm independent. I've never been Republican nor Democrat. Our family and friends are fa that are Democrat and Republican. I treat them equally. I treat them as American for first. And I know talent when I see it. I know what our government needs. Our democracy desperately needs new blood. I know what to do. I would make Wade comp controller. I would make Matt attorney general. Louis Marinelli, my lieutenant governor. And of all people, I really feel that young person John Drake, Secretary of State, put a new face on this state. He knows what's wrong. These kids know what wrong is what's needed. Give them a chance. And I will be proud to have him as my Secretary of State. And Professor Hannock is a righteous, virtuous man. He's a great example of a husband and a father. Um, there's a time and place, and he needs to be part of the Department of Education in the state of California. And my distant cousin, <laughs> Wong, I would love to make him a very important person. And I really feel that he would make an amazing, amazing person in our state assembly as speaker. And so aside from that, I have bold new ideas. I encourage the listeners to visit my website, www.governor.life. And I have all my reasons why I would be the best choice. I'm new, I'm different. I'm here to get the job done. My name is Fuji, F-U-J-I. Let the Democrats, Republicans know there's an F word, and it's going to be family, unity, G, uh, justice, and integrity. Thank, Thank you. you. 
Okay, we're next up will be Louis Marinelli. Louis Marinelli, in a minute and a half, the question is to you. Well, first of all, I got to say that I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm honored, but not running for lieutenant governor. Uh, but thank you, Mr. Fuji, for that. Um, why I would be a better governor than the current uh, leader? Well, because of two reasons. I would say, first of all, that uh, like many of the other candidates on this virtual stage tonight, um, you know, I, I'm not bought and paid for by big donors and corporations and political donations and political action committees and so on and so forth. I mean, it's difficult to be a leader in a position like governor because you have to make tough decisions. But it makes it even more difficult when you have to weigh who's going to stop making contributions to your campaign if you don't make the decisions they want you to make. So he's in a tough spot because he's allowed himself to be bought and sold. And now he has to not only make tough decisions, but he also has to kind of you know weigh what he's going to lose politically when he makes a decision, uh, uh, one decision over the other. So I don't have that kind of extra pressure on my shoulders. I'm just going to be able to, as governor, make the decisions that I feel in my heart are the right decisions for California because I'm not bought and paid for by political action committees and uh, lobbyists and groups like that. The other uh, reason for that is because I'm going to govern California through a different lens. I'm going to govern California through a lens of civil liberties just as much as we do it through civil rights. And I think there's an important distinction between those two. Yes, I support civil rights. I'm a big advocate of civil rights, but I also support civil liberties. That's why I don't support things like the lockdown because I believe that people needed to be allowed to go about their business and make personal decisions for themselves. I don't think it's the responsibility of government <laughs> to make everybody's decisions for them. So thank that's you. The key to one thank you. We're got to keep it to a minute and a half. A lot of candidates, a lot of questions. Want to make sure everybody gets equal time. Let's go now to James. Yes. James Henning in a minute and a half. Is uh, inconsistent on the value of human life. Uh, I take every human life to be precious. That's why I oppose capital punishment, the governor waffles. That's why I oppose the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, which the University of Berkeley supports. That lab is all about nuclear stockpiling, which means it's all about the mutual assured deterrence policy. I'm opposed to physician-assisted suicide. When people are in terrible straits, when they need our help, it does not help them to say, well, we'll take care of it. You can kill yourself. I'm certainly opposed to the deliberate slaughter of the innocent. Dismembering, that's what it is, the dismembering of innocent human beings and uh, uh, California not only has uh, embraced abortion, it now, it, with the glitterati, uh, celebrates it. We need to turn this around. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go now to the next question. Uh, the next question is by Joshua Spivak. Joshua Spivak is one of the go-to recall experts routinely uh, quoted by multiple newspapers around America, outside of California. He has recently talked about what the strategy is on the Newsom campaign in relation to the recall effort. This question is designed at showing recall candidates' ability to understand the election environment and the race that they are going to be participating in. Spivak suggests that Gavin Newsom would want the recall election to be pushed out as far as possible, giving him time to raise money allow the economy to reopen, and generally get over harsh feelings over the recall. Other people are saying that it's in Newsom's best interest to have the recall election sooner. What do you think the governor wants, and what would be better for the governor, to have the recall election sooner or later? This is to showcase your ability to understand the politics behind the election that you're running in. Is it better for Newsom to have the recall election pushed up sooner or later, and why would he want to do that? Place yourself in the governor and explain to us the thinking behind the recall election. First up will be John. Uh, you are unmuted now. You have to unmute yourself. So, yeah. All right. That is a difficult one because unlike prior um, recall elections, um, this one, it shows um, the farther out it's going, 
it actually shows the more unpopular he's getting versus in 2003 under Schwarzenegger uh, or, or during the recall where Schwarzenegger was elected, the popularity for, for, um, for the um, recall candidate, uh, the popularity for the for the governor being recalled actually um, decreased during that same amount of time. And so while right now it's still sort of decreasing, but sort of still coming low, if you pushed it in the future, I could see I could see him trying to have the election farther out because as the economy um, regains, as as jobs um, start coming back, as as people are able to experience life more normally again, it would make more sense that there would be less of a recall on the mind because life will be getting back to normal, um, more so than it has been in the past year. And so I... I guess I would say if I was Newsom, I would want it out farther than now, even though, because it's not such a dramatic decrease in popularity. So that's, that's my, that's my answer. It's a difficult question. Thank you. That's why we asked. Next up will be Frank. Let's go to Frank. Frank in a minute and a half. Would Governor Newsom want to push the recall election, move it sooner? What is he thinking and why would he do that? Well, first of all, I can tell you what Gavin Newsom is thinking. He's not thinking anything because he's a very, uh, he has no uh, intellectual competence based on his activity so far. Now, if uh, he should have, when he, when he closed the state down and I wasn't here, I was over in Bangladesh teaching uh, the students uh, accounting. But as I understand, when he closed many uh, companies down, he should have provided money for them like the TARP money that W. Bush did under the um, meltdown of 2008 of the economy. So there's no way that he can bring these companies back now as they struggle to get uh, economically viable with the uh, release of the COVID-19 shutdown. Uh, so if he waits too long, then the fires that haven't been, uh, there was no preventative maintenance of the forestry. So the fires are going to start in the summer. And then later the floods might come when the rains come. So he's doomed any way you look at it. Uh, there's really no way he can recover from this recall action. And um, uh, I really have, uh, I can't think of any strategy he's going to do except uh, maybe some publicity that he's trying to uh, protect the forest. He's trying to help businesses, but he's already made tremendous mistakes that are unreconcilable and he is doomed as a politician. Thank you. Louis Wong, in no more than a minute and a half, your stance, sir. Thank you so much. That's a, a very good and very valid reason. Obviously, that's why we're here discussing the recall election. But first, I want to do a quick shout out. Family, unity, justice, integrity. How does that sell? F-U-J-I, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know what Newsom has planned, and I don't care. Uh, they, we are in a blue state, deep, you know, fairly deep blue state, but it is controlled by establishment money. Uh, there are massive money that is being thrown at Newsom's way and thrown at every politician in order to keep things the same effing way, no change. So this is screwing over Republicans, Democrats, and independents, moderates. It doesn't matter who your identity is. We are all affected. I, I'm sorry to get to you. I'm a lifelong Democrat, and I am sick of the establishment Democratic Party. And when people blame Democrats and say nasty things about the Democratic Party, I don't represent that because my friends on the socialist left, on the Bernie Sanders left, on the Elizabeth Warren left, um, people, we want Medicare for all because pro for-profit in uh, healthcare does not work anywhere in the world. For-profit healthcare does not work anywhere in the world. Let me repeat that a third time. For-profit healthcare does not Thank you very much, thank you very much. I'm sorry, we gotta keep the, candidate, the comments to a minute and a half per candidate to make sure we're able to accommodate everybody. We're gonna go to Matt Mickelson. 
Matt Mickelson, what is the governor thinking? Is Does he think that elongating the recall election is good for him, moving it up shorter? Does he have a strategy? Place yourself in the mind of the governor and walk us through. Matt Mickelson. In one sense, the question is mistaken in that Newsom, though he is governor, is not in actuality fully in control of this state. When I said there is an elite that controls things, it's almost like a party, almost something that works like the Bolshevik party in a sense. Just think about this. The Secretary of State, the legislature, and various members of the bureaucracy in the elections in the elections departments are all going to do exactly what this class dictates in terms of strategy. It's not just going to be nuisance decision. They all work in concert together behind the scenes. That's reality. If you don't understand that, you don't understand anything that's going on. That being said, what's going to happen? They're going to delay it. They think that the that the memories, the horrible memories of the lockdowns, the destruction of businesses, deaths, many people died of these lockdowns. That is no joke. Tons of people in, in the uh, uh, tons of people in multiple areas died because of these lockdowns. And they want that memory to disappear. On the other hand, that may backfire because problems keep arising and that may backfire by the time the election happens. That's my answer. We're getting some great responses to this question. Uh, let's keep it going with Fuji. Let me make sure you're unmuted. Fuji, uh, I'm sorry, one second. You are unmuted, Mr. Shiora, Fuji Shiora. How would you answer that question? I believe, in my personal opinion, you know, Gavin Newsom is definitely a very intelligent, talented uh, politician in his own right. I believe they would like to do it sooner rather than later because I see the willful, intentional, deliberate conspiracy, conspiracy, more than one person, uh, committing voter oppression in the sense that why are we the only ones with the candidates having this debate? They are terrified of the California voters knowing about John Drink, Louis Wayne, Marinelli, uh, Professor Hanek, and Professor Wade, and Matt Nicholson. They're terrified. And I think they really are trying to make sure that they don't know about the other candidates. And it's no coincidence that the Los Angeles Times, San Francisco Chronicle, San Diego Tribune didn't even list the four known Afro-American candidates. I mean, my gosh, yesterday was Juneteenth. I would assume I emailed them. No reply. Not a single reply. So, no, they want it sooner. Thank you. Okay, let's keep it going. Let's go to Louis Marinelli. You are unmuted. Thank you. I, I believe that the uh, governor is making a calculated decision to... Uh, or you at least prefer to have the election done sooner rather than later. I think we can see the reason why. I mean, we have a governor who, you know, only in response to the recall being qualified did he decide to start opening up our uh, economy. Only in response to the lock or to the uh, recall being qualified did he decide to start sending out stimulus checks to people as a form of passive bribing to get people to vote for him. Uh, and then he made a decision that he was going to reopen everything up on the 15th and not only reopen everything, but also, you know, end the emergency and return his emergency powers back to the legislature, back to our elected representatives. And then he reneged on that. So here we have a situation where the governor has tasted power, doesn't want to give it back. And he's kind of pulled it over one time where he said, well, we're going to reopen on the 15th, but I'm going to maintain my emergency powers. I don't think he's going to be able to keep that argument going on for very long because people are going to realize, because I mean, people in California have seen Star Wars. You know what happens when you give uh, an executive emergency powers. You don't get them back. And so I think that they're going to make the calculated decision that uh, we need to move on this now so that we can get it over with. And then Gavin Newsom can continue with his uh, you know, growth as a dictator in California and maintain his control on all of our uh, lives with his emergency powers. Thank you. James, the question is to you. And the question is, again, it's kind of shifted, hasn't it? I'm sorry? 
the question is again because it seems to have kind of shifted so far in the discussion. I'm sorry. So the question is, does Gavin Newsom want the recall election to happen sooner or later? And put yourself in the mind of the governor. What is he thinking? And what is his strategy related to the recall election? This is your chance to show the voters that you understand the environment that you're campaigning in. Well, I think in some respects the governor is inscrutable. After all, he sends me an email every day asking for a $3 donation. I don't know what that will do for him. <laughs> Perhaps he's uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel. But now, to, to be focused, I think the governor is going to overcome the recall. I think that what's really crucial is that we speak clearly during this process of the recall. The whole question of the role of money, of course, is pivotal. I think money uh, distorts politics terribly. But in the Cooper, why is it that we allow ourselves to be suckered by this constant money fuel propaganda? Have we no independent mind? Are we limited to the mainstream newspapers? We ought not to be. There's a whole philosophy of the state that goes back way back to Plato, and we ought to be aware of our own heritage. We ought to be able to see through some of this stuff. There is a lot of the stuff we ought to be able to see through. Uh, so, I've got 30 seconds left. What should we do? We should blow the whistle on Newsom, blow the whistle on money and politics, and stop falling for this stuff. Good grief. Okay, thank you very much. We're going to go to our last question from reporters, Diane Herman. Diane Herman has lived in California. She's covered this. She's a reporter for an East Coast newspaper. Diane Herman's question to the recall candidates is, California has the highest homeless veteran population in the country. As a Vietnam era veteran, that's um, reporter Herman, I would like to know how you will address the homeless crisis amongst America's heroes. Well, in the same order, the question goes to John first. John, in a minute and a half, your response as a governor of the world's fifth largest economy. Well, um, addressing homelessness among veterans specifically, um, first of all, homelessness among veterans is, is a nationwide issue. It's not just a California issue. But when addressed in California, a lot of the times what happens is that VA, VA hospitals tend to be way overrun and mismanaged. What we have to do is that we have to start prioritizing them in the system rather than for them to, to later tr treatments later on in time. Because what happens is that when they don't get the treatment they deserve, whether that's uh, that they need, whether that's mental or physical, they oftentimes resort to suicide and and, and 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 because and because they're not able to get the um, the mental treatment um, that they have, that also affects their ability to, to hold jobs. It affects their ability to get um, certain um, so, social pro, um, programs for, for themselves. And so it, it's just an, it's just a large encompassing issue that mu must be solved um, very specifically for that group because homelessness in general needs to be solved, but among veterans is a completely different issue. I'm just messing with that. All right. Thank you. We're going to go to Frank. Frank, how should, what should uh, you address the homeless issue amongst veterans? Frank Henry Wade. Yeah. Right. Well, well, first of all, I have to say that I devoted two years of my life to the war in Vietnam. The My father was a uh, Pearl Harbor volunteer uh, in the, uh, uh, and it's not just a problem of the veterans. I think it's a homeless problem in general. We, we have to exert emergency powers. We should build the Quonset huts, which were built in San Francisco and uh, Richmond to uh, make the war effort, uh, uh, manufacturing the war effort. We should uh, build those Quonset huts immediately around the San Francisco area, the areas of California, of course, San Francisco is the one that I'm familiar with, uh, having been uh, born here. 
it's an emergency situation. We don't, we shouldn't go to parties at the French restaurant and wish that the homeless problem does not exist. We should immediately start building these facilities, use FEMA facilities um, uh, from the federal government if need be, but we got to get these suffering people off the streets and the people that have to live in their cars. We can't tolerate this another minute. We have the funds, we have the uh, wealth to do this, and we don't need a governor that sits on his butt uh, uh, pretending that he's uh, being a good governor. It's an emergency situation that has to be addressed. And I would, I would use all of our emergency powers to alleviate this home, homeless crisis. And in the Thank city you. of Los Angeles, Thank you. Sorry, we got to take a minute, answer to a minute and a half in order to accommodate all of the evidence. Uh, let me mute the mics. Okay, moving on to Louis Wong. What is all your right. response, sir? Simple, 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 but not easy. Here's two steps. One, we're going to cut our national federal defense budget from $783 billion, we're going to cut that all the way down to $400 billion. $400 billion. That still keeps us as the largest military in the world. With the $383 billion that we save from basically having our national defense, we're going to devote all those billions into a Section 8 program exclusively for VA, exclusively for veterans only, based on need. Two-step solution. I can't do that as a governor. Newsom cannot do that as a governor. We need the entire 330 million Americans to value the honor and sacrifices that that our VA has 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 done and our, and serve our country, we cannot we cannot we cannot have anyone out on the streets. We can do this, and we just need everyone to uh, to come together on on really making this a, a huge priority. Uh, I I don't know what else to say about this. We don't need that. You, you know, we can we can still be the number one military in the freaking world. Uh, and let's spend the billions on our troops and our veterans and, uh, you know, all the all the fathers and, and, mo and mothers and military families out there. Uh, and uh, obviously today is Happy Father's Day to everyone that, that that's related. OK, next up is going to be Matt Mickelson. Let me make sure you are. Matt Mickelson, your audio is up. What is your response to deal with the veteran and homeless issues? Both gigantic crises here in a state of 40 million people. Matt Nicholson. This is yet another failure by both Newsom and the California supposed elite. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. The more money that has been spent, the more has been wasted, and squandered away, and actually spent on the bank accounts, honestly, of the elite and the class that supports them. Just think about this. Spending in this state on supposed homeless services has increased vastly. It has, and yet we see more and more problems. Why is that? They're spending millions on apartments for, for homeless people when it shouldn't cost that much. This is the same thing that's gone on with supposed high-speed rail. Billions spent on a choo-choo train to nowhere that's never been built and will never be built. Similarly, all this homeless housing, which is supposedly being built, where's that money going to? It's going into someone's pockets. Something is extremely corrupt here. We are going to have to figure out how to dismantle the system first before we can decide whether we can spend anything. And that's what we have to do first. I love the succinctness. Um, next up is Fuji. Let me make sure you're unmuted. Yes, thank you. How would you? Uh, thank you. Well, first of all, what's important is I've been ha I would handle it by getting talented people involved, and clearly Matt Nicholson, if he doesn't run for governor, he has to 
be morally obligated to run for attorney general. California needs him. <laughs> you know, he, he's a go-getter. I like what he's saying. Um, and just as important, I will have to put in three tiers of homelessness and priority for funding. Homeless families, veterans, and then the other homeless people, third. So in that priority, we have to prioritize funding. And I will build more homeless housing in Inland Empire, more inland where it's more affordable, less costly on the coastline. Um, this would work with my LTA, Lighter Than Air program, to have public transportation similar to the Lighter Than Air program being used in England or the Goodyear blimp. Basically, it's an airship that could make it affordable to live and work and travel 100 miles out from the coastline. So this is one way to do it. Another way is I would open up an investigation into the other cities, New York, Chicago, Minneapolis, and find out, is it true that those cities are sending their homeless to our state? Let's find out if this is true. And if this is proven, then they should be sued to compensate, to help us pay for this homelessness crisis that they help cause. Thank you. Thank you, Fuji. Next up, we're going to go to one second. Sorry. Uh, Louis Marinelli for the comment on veterans, Louis Marinelli. Yes, thank you. I first want to uh, draw attention to the fact that I think that two Louises think alike because the previous candidate with the same first name was speaking about reducing military spending and redirecting that towards other uh, projects. And I am in that same uh, line of thinking, but from a slightly different angle. I'm not interested in reducing the American military budget. I'm interested in reducing the amount that California contributes to that American military budget. Namely, I wanna take all of the money out of the American military budget that California contributes to it simply because we're a member of the American Union. We're in the United States. If California leaves the United States, we keep California's taxes in California. Right now, as the other candidate was uh, was uh, speaking about, the American military budget's about $700 billion a year. Well, California, on average, every year spends about, or at least pays for about 13 or 14% of the national budget. That means we're spending about $90 billion a year on our defense here in California. Well, the average military defense budget around the world is about $30 billion. So if California secedes from the United States and maintains a military that's comparable to basically every other country in the world, spending about $30 billion, and we free up $60 billion a year just like that, that we can then redirect into other programs, such as helping the homeless. Now that gets into our question, what do we, do, what do we want to do about the homeless crisis in California? I want, to, I want to take it on from two different angles. First, I want to reduce the cost of living in California so that there are fewer people that need to become homeless in the first place. That's one part of the problem. And the other part of the problem is I want to give salaries and shelter to those who are homeless now in exchange for their work. What kind of work? If they want to volunteer, voluntarily join a work program, they will be given salaries and shelter in exchange for community beautification programs, helping Thank us you. clean out the dry brush from forests and things of that nature. We're going to we get job for the people. I apologize. Just trying to keep, be fair to all candidates. Keep an average amount of time per candidate. Uh, next up is James. Same question. Yes. First, I'm veteran heroes. My dad was a veteran hero. He was all over the world during World War II. He was uh, in in D Day. And even though he died in his 80s, he made it a point to have an American flag on his casket. I certainly respected him, and he certainly respected me. When during the Vietnam War, which I take to be a manifestly unjust war, I returned my draft card. He certainly respected me. Now, in terms of the homeless, whether they're veterans or not veterans, First thing we've got to do, each and every one of us, come out of our cocoons and personally speak to homeless people. Get to know at least a few of them. In this respect, I much regard the work of Steve Lopez on the LA Times. We have to know these people. And among other things, in coming to know them, we will know how terrible meth addiction is. 
there's a lot of glorification uh, of drug use. Meth kills, and we need to aggressively break up major distribution centers of meth. Thank you. Uh, John, were you mentioned specifically in that comment? Oh, no, no. I was wondering if I could, like, respond to things or no. Is that we're not doing that? Uh, I will give you a minute to respond, and we will allow every other minute, uh, candidate a minute to respond. One minute to John and an additional minute to every candidate starting with John. So what I think we have to do is that we have to attack this from a realistic perspective at this point. We have to stop dreaming and start, and start thinking. So right now, um, when, when addressing the homeless issue, we have to understand that it's not just housing. It's mental health, it's addiction, and, that, and, that, and all those things. What we have to do in order to fund that is that we can't defund the military because we, that's not within our, our, our ability to do that as a state. What we have to do is that we have to defund failed projects and reallocate those funds into housing, to mental health, in, um, into physical health, into, into addiction treatment, and into jobs building incentive programs. That's what we have to do. We can't keep, we can't keep putting our, we can't keep putting dream solutions where realistic solutions should be because that's the that's why we're in the mess we're in at this point. Is that we've dream, we've dreamt too big. We put all of our chips in one basket, and then when that dream failed, we had nothing. We had nothing else left. And that's just my opinion. So. Okay, an additional minute of commentary to Frank. Frank. One more minute of comment. Frank, in addition Okay, to thank you. Well, first of all, I have to tell you that I've gotten a communication from my students in Bangladesh. They're, they're, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, we can. I got a communication from my students in Bangladesh that are watching this. So, hello, North South University in Dhaka. Um, yeah, the, uh, uh, the point is that uh, we haven't touched on the problem of dealing with the drug addicts in our city and the mental illness. And I propose that we bring back the mental institutions that were closed down by uh, the Brown and Reagan air, uh, that we, we have to bring these people that need aid uh, into uh, mental institutions. And um, we have to step up the support of our local police in order to keep the uh, areas of the city where there's a lot of homeless crime free because in the uh, sections of San Francisco, it's actually the crime is so high, it's unsafe, and the police have been hampered by the local laws that make it difficult to enforce um, the uh, uh, security. And basically, I also support a free arbitration courts for labor and, and uh, civil uh, disputes. Thank and you. more uh, tax um, uh, credits. Okay, thank you. We're going to go now to a minute response from Lewis Wong. One minute response, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm hearing some good stuff. Uh, I, uh, I believe that was Dr. Frank, uh, Mr., um, uh, Dr. Wei Frank, uh, mental health uh, institutions and uh, also Mr. Uh, John Drake uh, also mentioned mental health, 100% in agreement. Uh, again, I'm gonna jump back to my central issue, Medicare for all. Medicare for all will fund med mental health, 100%, 100% dental vision, 100% uh, psychiatric treatment, 100% single payer is my solution. It's Bernie Sanders solution. A lot of people are, are, are you know, uh, lots of socialist countries like Sweden and the UK with the uh, NHS system, uh, China, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, so many countries have socialist uh, healthcare programs and it works because everyone invests in it and everyone wants the best doctors. Everyone. Thank you. Sorry, we have, we have a lot of questions, a lot of candidates. We're gonna go next to Matt Mickelson. An additional minute of commentary. Most candidates are choosing to talk about the homeless crisis. You can spin it on whatever you would like, sir. Matt Nicholson. I think, again, that I'm sorry I'm coming from this 30,000 feet up high perspective, but just think about this. 
If we ask the question, why is so much supposedly being spent and so many people supposedly being hired uh, for the homeless problem along with many other problems? And yet the problem just seems to get worse and worse. Once we ask that question, we start realizing that there is that the solution doesn't rely on doing the same thing over and over again. I'm sure everybody here has great ideas about what to do. Some of them have been undertaken, some have not. But for some reason, they are not getting through. Whoever gets elected governor should shine as bright as possible light on what's going on and open it up to the public entirely. Otherwise, we're just not going to get anywhere. I'm sorry to say that. And I think that's the truth. But um, thank you, everybody else, for their responses. Next up will be Fuji. Fuji, thank minute you. of additional response. Yes, and I think uh, what Louis Wong, and Wang, Wang said and Mike Nixon are interesting. I think what uh, Matt Nicholson is saying, Einstein said it best, if you, do, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result, it's a form of insanity. We definitely have to do something different. And also going back to my distant cousin, Louis, <laughs> Louis Wang, um, a, a universal healthcare, healthcare, what does that mean? It means a healthier workforce, is a more productive workforce. In these countries that have universal health care, there's less homelessness. That's something to take note and a lesson to learn from. So yes, and definitely also, I want to know more about uh, John Drake. He's the youngest one here. I think it's a, it should be, yes, California should do an hour interview with him so the other young college kids could be made well aware of other kids running. It's so important to get young people involved because whatever, good deeds or mistakes that we, our generation will make, the young people like John Drake will inherit. So it's important. I would like to say yes, California, do an hour interview. Thank, Thank you. you. Louis Marinelli, an additional minute of response. You could talk about homelessness or anything else you would like to that the other candidates have mentioned. Louis Marinelli. Well, I'll try to pick up where I left off. We were talking about, in this campaign, we're supporting a shelter and jobs program for the homeless. We want to have, you know, those who want a job, we can give them a state job that will send them in crews around our communities and do and work on community improvement and beautification programs and projects to make our communities more uh, beautiful, basically speaking. So it's an investment we're going to make in the homeless population, but we're going to get something directly from that investment. Not only are we going to get the homeless into homes, ideally, we're also going to have a more beautiful community in which we all live. Uh, in addition to the community beautification programs and projects that can be sent out into our forest to help clean out the dry brush that helps and provide the service to the people of California and reducing the risk and severity of forest fires. So I think there's a lot of things that we can do in terms of uh, this program, this work for, work for the homeless program that I have in my website, counts at governor.com. Thank you. James, minute response, sir. Yes, political will connects with solidarity. And I'd like to say this about solidarity. It's not a feeling of vague compassion. It's not shallow distress at the misfortunes of other people, whether close at hand or far away. Solidarity is a firm and persevering determination to commit oneself to the common good. That is to say, to the good of all and of each individual. And here we come to personal responsibility because we are all really responsible for all. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go now to questions from the Times of San Diego. We are getting closer to the finish. We will be stopping at three. Every candidate will be given a two-minute closing statement to say whatever they would like. I would like to get in a few questions from the Times of San Diego so that we are answering questions by reporters that are talking about the recall and hopefully we can slip into that media narrative. The Times of San Diego asks multiple questions, but this one I like particularly well. So I'd like all the candidates to, again, put yourself in the right frame. Some of you support the recall. Others do not support the recall. If you support the recall, why should people who don't like the recall 
choose you or have faith in you as being a good governor for them. If you are against the recall, why should people who were for it have faith for you as being a governor? Whoever gets to be governor is going to be dealing with a, pop, a percentage of the population that liked the recall and didn't. Each of you has a stance, a strong one, on whether you're for the recall or against. I'd like you to talk to the people that have the opposite opinion of you and tell them why you would be a good governor for their interest too. We're gonna start with John in a minute and a half. John, please say, were you for the recall or against it and why people who have a different opinion than you should still support you? John. So initially and probably still now, I am a, I am against the recall, and the reason for it being is that I see it more as Democrats were, are not going to recall Newsom. Many Democrats don't like him, but they're not going to recall him. And they say, and and many have said that they would rather vote for someone different in 2022. But they believe that the recall is a waste of time. But the reason why I think, even as someone who doesn't support the recall, you should still vote for me um i would say it's because I, I i know what i still know what what californians want i, I know i know what californians need they need someone who, who actually represents them they need some they need someone um who understands them like i don't like this at all um i think he's an awful governor but the reason why I, I wouldn't recall him or why i wouldn't vote to recall him is because I think I think it's more of just a publicity thing than anything else. Republicans obviously um, are trying to bank on getting a Republican in the office with it, but I don't think that really will solve the issue because they still have a Democratic Senate to deal with. And so, it, so I see it more as something to bandage a bullet wound. It's 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 not going to effectively change anything at all. That's my opinion. Thank you. Next up will be. Uh, Frank on YouTube. Frank, please say if you're for the recall or against it, and why people who have the opposite opinion of you should look to you as a leader who will be fair to them. Right. Well, I'm for the recall because Gavin Newsom is incompetent and he's done a lot of damage to the state. Uh, so far, and he must be removed. Now, those people who would uh, be for him, you have to realize I'm not a politician. I got into this position because I'm available. I'm a highly qualified business leader. I've been manager of companies for uh, 40 years. I've been a college professor for 10 years. I'm the most qualified accountant there is. I don't know anyone else that has more qualifications in accounting and tax understanding than me. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. I'm not going to run for any office again. I will be placed either in a corporation or a university uh, the way I was before I was kicked out of Bangladesh because I lost my visa because of from the local people. So this is a great opportunity for you to elect a very good manager to run the state and to solve its unbelievable problems and of homelessness, of the, of the businesses have been destroyed because of COVID-19, the forest fires, and the, uh, uh, the, the, the inequity in the So I can do these. Thank you. Lewis Wong, question to you, sir. Lewis Wong, question to you, sir. Here's my answer. And, you know, very good question, but here's, here's my answer. Unfortunately, this recall does not matter. This recall election does not matter. Uh, win or lose, whatever happens, unfortunately, that does it doesn't matter because nothing's going to change. Uh, I think we all agree that is the case, that the <laughs> universal consensus. Uh, nothing's going to change. What matters is this right now, this right here, all of us right here, right now, anyone who's listening to any of this, 
this is what matters. Grassroots, uh, nonpartisan, you know, non-establishment partisan, uh, not, you know, no, no politicians. Let's get rid of all the politicians. Let's fire them all. And then we, and then real change can happen. I love each and every one's answers. I love each and every one's passion. We're all patriots here. We're all amazing human beings. Uh, we're, 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 it, we can be in positions to impact so much change. All we have to do is continue to strive for change. We have to change the fundamental system. Thank you. Next up will be Matt Mickelson. Matt Mickelson, please say if you're for the recall, against it, and why people in California who have a different opinion than you should still believe that you would be a good governor for them. Matt Nicholson. Yes, I am 100% in favor of the recall. When the lockdowns were announced and so many hosannas were being shouted toward this governor from our supine press and media, the next day I looked up the recall campaign and asked to help them. This recall has to happen. If these people get away, with such a destructive policy as the lockdowns and aren't punished in some way, it's going to happen again. And it's going to be worse next time. I don't know what the excuse will be next time, but it's going to be worse. Now, as to whether I would be better than someone else, what I've learned in this lockdown situation is that people, it has exposed a lot of people who I believe would have been good politicians as terrible ones. A lot of people I thought believed in what I thought don't really believe in what I thought. And it also showed me that a lot of people who I thought I would be my enemies are not my enemies. You have to take each person as they come and understand that there's a lot of good in each person and there's a lot of bad in some other people. You have to try and sort them out and figure out. And I'm, I'm trying to, to, um, to direct myself toward those who support freedom who are, who are horrified by the jobs and lives destroyed by lockdowns and the other tyrannical actions taken here. Please support me if you, if you want to do that. Okay. Next up is Fuji. Let me make sure Fuji is... John, uh, we have lost Fuji from the stream. When he returns, I will ask him that question. We will now move on to Louis Marinelli. Louis Marinelli. Are you a supporter, opponent, and why would people who think differently than you believe that you could be a good leader for them? Candidate Marinelli. Thank you. And when my time is coming up, if you could just say something uh, audibly, because I'm not really watching you when I speak. Uh, Sounds good. Just so I don't go over my time. Okay. Basically, here's the short answer. The short answer is that, yes, we're in the middle of a recall election. I support that, of course. I think that Gavin Newsom has made some bad decisions that to recall him. But this election for me personally and my campaign is not just about the recall. It goes bigger than that. And the reason that I would be a good choice for even those who don't support the recall is because my campaign is not just about recalling Newsom. It's about changing fundamentally what California is all about. We're making California an independent country. I guarantee you there are people out there in our state of California who do not support this recall but believe that California should become an independent country. Polls have showed that somewhere between 30, 40, 45 percent of Californians are open to the idea of California becoming an independent country. So that tells me that there are inevitably people out there who are opposed to the recall in this year, but are supportive, generally speaking, of California independence. My campaign represents independence, first and foremost. A vote for recall Newsom is a vote for independence, because you'll be able to then vote for Marinelli for governor to replace Newsom. And like I said before, if I'm elected governor, I will declare California an independent country, put that Declaration of Independence in the hands of the legislature to affirm it, and then put that affirmation from the state legislature in the hands of the people to a uh, independence referendum like we've seen in, in Scotland in 2014. They're going to have another independence referendum there in Scotland. The people of Catalonia are working on trying to have an independence referendum, and the people of California need to have the chance to vote yes or no on independence. This campaign is bigger than any recall. It's bigger than any one person. It's a whole idea of California independence, and that's why I'm running for governor, and that's why the people who don't support the recall could still vote for Mary Ellen. James, are you a supporter, opponent, 
How do you feel about it? And why do people who disagree with you should still vote for you? Professor Hennig. Yes, I support the recall insofar as it gives us some space to do some hard thinking about the nature of politics. Politics isn't locked into the present. Politics emerges from the past and it goes ahead to the future. Going ahead to the future, what I want us to do is look very closely at what I've spoken of as solidarity. And we might understand solidarity in terms of bridging social capital. Not just in terms of economy, but social capital, bridging social capital. I think we have to understand politics in terms of subsidiarity. We have to begin at the beginning with the person and then go to the family and then to the neighborhood and then to the local community and work our way up. And also, I want us to understand politics in terms of economic democracy. There's no political democracy unless people actually have the capacity, the economic capacity to participate in political democracy. And I think that uh, in the background there is something called the universal destination of human goods. We are all stewards. And human goods ought to be directed towards each and every person. Thank you. We're going to go to the next question. This will be the last question before we go to closing statements. This will be the last question before we go to closing statements. Last question for all candidate, followed by a two-minute statement by each candidate with a hard stop in 30 minutes. So the last question comes from the San Diego Times article. Governor Newsom has been issuing a massive amount of stimulus checks and other benefits. Now, he said California had a budget surplus. The legislative analyst office, the official audit arm of the California government, says that the governor is lying. The surplus is not as big as he says it is, and in fact, he's taking out loans. Either way, there's a budget surplus of somewhere around 30 to 70, perhaps $80 billion. How would you spend the 30 or $70 billion surplus right now? And is spending stimulus checks the best way to spend that money? We will go to John. Um, no, it is not a good way um, to spend the surplus of money because a lot of these stimulus checks are $500 and what? That covers maybe half your phone bill in Southern California. In, in, in San Francisco, it does nothing. Um, and the only and and the qualifications are not for it. It's not like every single person gets it. Only only if you qualify for it, you can get it. And the people um, and the people who would most likely need the money are people who are on the street who who don't have an, an address to receive that money for. I would say that money should be spent into into programs that help that will help the homeless and help those um, disenfranchised communi communities like communities of color or or even LGBTQ youth to be able to. To be able to improve their lives, either mentally, physically, um, through housing, or, or, or some sort of social programs, because LGBT youth, especially, um, are, are some of the biggest, um, uh, are one of the biggest homeless groups um, in this country because they don't have the resources necessary to survive on their own. Um, and so, and, and so, it, it's very, it's it's a very easy reason why Newsom is um, spending money on the stimulus checks and giving them out to so many Californians is because he's. He, he's in the face of a recall and he's trying to discreetly buy votes by giving people money that doesn't even really help them. It, like, I mean, I'll take the $500, but will it help pay for my insurance? Will it help pay for anything else I really need? No, it won't pay my rent, especially in Southern California, maybe a quarter of it, maybe half of it, but it's not going to do much. Thank you. Frank. How would you spend the budget surplus? And is the governor spending it the right way? Uh, well, first of all, I question whether or not there is a surplus. As a 40-year 40 uh, uh, 40 career uh, CPA, I know that you can we can create a surplus, we can create a deficit. But the point is, uh, as per my book, which I'm uh, trying to sell to my supporters as they donate to my campaign. The uh, U.S. Um, 
the U.S. dollar supreme, and we can ex we can extend our national debt into infinity. We have an infinite amount of money. California should uh, deficit be, should be part of the national debt. Now, uh, with this money, we should have bailed out companies that have been hurt by COVID-19. We should uh, go back to those companies and reinstate them with massive amounts of money, the way TARP money was given by G.W. Um, Bush. Uh, I think that was the right thing Bush did in 2008 in the financial crisis. Now, I understand the EDD was supposed to give money uh, to stimulus money to uh, uh, gig employees. Not a single penny has been given out in this special EDD money. They, they say that some of it was stolen and that should be investigated. And if there is money missing, we should get a massive uh, transfer from the federal government to bail out the people who were entitled to EDD money. That's a major. Thank you. Thank you. We're now going to go to Lewis. Thank you for all participating. We have to keep the responses to a minute and a half. I appreciate your flexibility. This is to make sure everybody gets equal time. Lewis Wong, you are unmuted. How would you spend the surplus? And is Newsom doing it the right way? Your opinion, sir. Those swans. Yeah, uh, it's great that we have a surplus. I will spend it on providing free public education. Free public education. I'll say it one more time. Free public education. Any high school student in California, if they want to better themselves, if they want to be a EMT, a medical professional, a dental assistant, uh, law enforcement, uh, you know, a myriad of skilled uh, skilled labor force, you know, electricians, uh, masonry, uh, bricklayers, whatever it is that they wish to better themselves with, I want to empower that. I want to empower them. I don't want. Uh, tuition or cost as a barrier everyone in california our we need to invest in our gen, in the younger generation we need to invest in the future and the best way we can do with that surplus money is to enable millions more ed, uh, educated young bright amazing kids to go to attend any public school uh, public university, city college, state college, it doesn't matter. Let's have more free public education for everyone. That's what I'm gonna do. Lewis Wong for... Thank you. Matt Mickelson, how would you spend the budget surplus? Is it being done right? If there's one thing we've learned after the past year, it's that Newsom, the entire elite class that runs California and their hangers on, they lie. They lie when they breathe, when they write sentences. The periods and commas are lies. The spaces between the words are lies. Do you really believe that after an unprecedented collapse in California caused by their very own actions, that there's actually a surplus? I think I've got something to tell you if you actually do believe that. We need to have somebody look into this, an independent third party, an auditor or something, something of that sort. It's only going to occur there's some political breakthrough. Our, our finances in this state are just as screwed up as they are in the United States finances. There's a lot of phony baloney, funny, funny money floating around. And only if we can get a handle on what's going on, which is not impossible, can we actually determine what kind of money we have. I'm not going to talk about spending phony monopoly money. We need to find out what, where we actually are before we can make that decision. Thank you. Uh, Fuji has lost been lost from the stream. We're going to move to Louis Marinelli. Is there a budget surplus? How would you spend it? Would you spend it how the governor's doing it or completely different and he's doing it wrong? Your opinion, candidate Louis Marinelli. Well, let's just go with the idea that there is one just for the sake of the discussion. And if that is the case, and I had $70 billion to spend, uh, I would do two things with it. I would first, because the Senate has, California State Senate has put a price tag on 
uh, providing for free uh, secondary and uh, education at uh, the universities and state colleges around California, five billion dollars a year. I would take a portion of that, say, I don't know, maybe twenty-five billion of it, and fully fund uh, universities and colleges across California for the next five years. Give California the taste of free education, and then I would take the rest of the money, and I would create a program to reinvest it back in all the businesses that were closed down because of the lockdown. So we can bring them back to California. We want to have a business repatriation program to bring businesses back to California from other states where they fled before the pandemic, before the lockdowns, and then also help the small business owners in California who stayed here but have lost their businesses as a result of Newsom's lockdowns to open up again and go, get back to work. So that's how I would try to use that money. Thank you. James. Yes. Professor Hedy, oh, how would you spend the budget surplus? Is it being done the right way? Well, yes, I do think there is a surplus, and I don't think we should spend it all. We need to have a substantial reserve, especially given the worsening drought. It's really bad. And the catastrophic wildfires. We're all on edge, and our California ecosystem is at risk. But there are three promising and practical ways to use what we don't say. First, let's help families to care for elderly and disabled family members at home and reduce their medical costs. Second, let's fund the state's biggest gun buyback ever. Start with the AK-47s. And third and last, let's really support crisis pregnancy centers. Kamala Harris and Javier Becerra tried to shut them down while the Supreme Court told them they were wrong to do so. Every life is precious. Let's act like we really believe that. Okay, thank you. That concludes our questions. In order to make sure that we have adequate time for all candidates, we will now move to closing statements. Each candidate will have a hard two minutes to make their closing statement. They can address what other candidates said and disagree. They could talk about other issues they weren't able to get to, or they could finish up with points that they wanted to make. It's your time, two minutes with a hard cutoff. We'll still continue in the same order. The first person up will be John. The closing statement, sir. Um, John. I guess what I would have to say is that I'm not a fan of the word free. I'm not an idealist at all. I'm very much a realist. I believe in practical solutions. And I don't think saying free housing, free education, free uh, free health care is, is practical. I think affordability should be the key word here. Should education be $50,000 a year? Uh, uh, I mean, a semester. Should it be $70,000 a semester? No. A bit, should it be free? Absolutely not. Because, because higher education must remain valuable and and paying for, for something it, it, it relatively remains valuable so i would say if you want an idealist if you want someone who who reaches for the heavens um and can fall back down flat on their face with nothing to show for it don't vote for me but if you want someone with real practical solutions who can understand human nature and understand how pol politics works. V vote for me. My, my entire degree is, is government and policy. I, I, I work. I, I work on social issues. I work on on trying to basically pass legislation all the time. I, I've been in, in politics since I was eleven, and I've studied political theory my entire life, all the way up until now. And so, if you want a realist, if you want someone who will actually try and make a real difference for you all, vote for me. Thank you. Next up will be Frank. Frank, your two minute closing statement. Frank, your two minute closing statement. Okay, uh, thanks. I just wanted to summarize that my career as a businessman overseas uh, for about 40 
30 years and a CPA. I uh, work to end apartheid in South Africa. I have an award from the USAID as a foreign service officer for uh, helping to end apartheid. And in the last 10 years, I've been combating Islamic extremism by teaching as a uh, professor in uh, schools in Muslim countries. Now, uh, basically, I want to solve the major issues that I talk about is having free arbitration courts for civil and labor disputes in addition to the petty uh, uh, to the small claims court I want to have uh, credits below the line deduction this means a refund for child care the uh, everyone with a child should get more child care money so there won't be abortions because a major reason for abortions is because people can't afford children and the casualty and theft loss should also be refunded to people when there's a disaster like an earthquake. This is a weakness in our tax system that should be create uh, that should be corrected. And lastly, I, as I reiterated the last time, that there should be a massive amount of money, tarp type money, paid out to the victims, the company victims of COVID-19, and there should be looked into what the EDD payments were supposed to be made that haven't been made uh, to the uh, to the workers, the gig workers, and the other unemployment um, uh, uh, people that. I think we lost his feed. Uh, thank you, Frank. We're going to move on to Lewis Wong. There we go. I'm, I'm, I'm awesome. unmuted now. So here's my two minutes. Uh, thank you. Uh, comments from John, uh, Mr. Drake. Uh, I don't, I'm going to not directly address them. I'm just going to talk about myself. I'm 34. I'm a millennial. Uh, I own my house right now here in Irvine. I own multiple properties, uh, investment properties. I'm a small business owner. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer degreed and I have a second degree in uh, macroeconomics from UC San Diego. I, here's a reality that is the truth. Amazon, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, zero income taxes, zero income taxes. That's a problem to me. <laughs> I don't know how they can legally get away with that. Oh, it's because the system's broken. Oh, it's because our government is controlled by billionaires and corporations. I am a socialist because that shit is not fair and it is wrong and we need to stand up against it. I, well, apologies. Uh, we can do better. We can, we can tax, um, we should tax Amazon. We should tax the richest billionaires. We should tax Trump who gets away with property taxes, evasion, with under under prop 13 that shields hundreds of billions from property taxes being collected we can do a lot if we just have a little bit of equity with our tax structure i'm a socialist because i believe we need to have tax cuts for all of us keep in mind i'm a i'm a, I'm a millionaire just like just like my man bernie sanders i i am a millionaire uh we need to tax billionaires and we need to tax corporations and we need to have uh, let's reduce taxes. Let's have let's lower taxes for property uh, owners, for homeowners. Let's uh, let's have a sales tax moratorium on all small businesses employing less than 50 employees. We can do so much more if you and I agree that the system is rigged and we should be doing better for everyone here and everyone that's listening to us. Let's tax the billionaires just a little bit more. Thank you. Matt Mickelson, closing state. The bottom line here, as I've been discussing, is we need to break up, we need to overthrow the elite stranglehold on our state and on our people. This is not an easy task. These people rely on millions of people in this state. They're their clients. They give billions of dollars to support them and to harvest their votes and their energy. It's not just welfare. It's entire segments of our economy. It's the entire education industry transportation, construction, tech sector. They're, they're intertwined and interrelated. 
It is a tall order. Tyranny like hell is not easily conquered. We do have one thing that is on our side, though, it's the truth, and that's a powerful ally. A governor who takes power against all these forces is going to be like an insurgent who's captured enemy headquarters of the enemy city. The other side's going to do literally anything to expel an alien body like that from the system. But the governor, the new governor, has to reach out to millions of people who are left out of the elite system, who are suffering and have suffered because of the lockdowns and all the things they did without even asking us. He's got to be truculent, stubborn as a mule when it's necessary, but he's got to be nimble as a gazelle at others. The executive actions and proposed laws must be released at every opportunity. I can't tell you specifically what has to be done to end this tyranny. But I'll say that only someone with the backbone, knowledge, and temperament, and the proper based attitude can survive and turn back the tide on this thing. My name is Matthew Mickelson. My email is liberatecalifornia, one word, at protonmail.com. Liberatecalifornia at protonmail.com. Thanks for having me here. Thank you. We're going to go to uh, Fuji. Is not here. He has not come back into the stream. I'm sure it's a tech issue. Louis Marinelli. Closing statement. Thank you. I, I think that uh, any political debate is not complete unless there is some reference and discussion about Russia. So as the <laughs> representative of uh, the Campaign for California Independence in Moscow, Russia, at the, and the head of the California Embassy and Culture Center in Russia, I want to talk to the people of California a little bit about, about some of the work that I do here in Moscow, uh, as there is certainly a shroud of uh, curiosity as to why, you know, I may be in Russia running for governor. But well, like I said, we have the California Embassy and Culture Center through which we represent California values in a country that I think needs to make a lot of progress in liberalization of its society. And so we have here a permanent exhibit on California values and culture. Uh, one of which is the exhibit on Harvey Milk in a city which, as I've spoken about in the past, bans gay pride parades in a country which has a law banning what they call homosexual propaganda, talking about, you know, basically gay rights. And so I'm very proud of our ability to have that exhibit here in Moscow. Uh, beyond that, you know, we've been closed down due to the pandemic. We just reopened the embassy here in Moscow. Our, one of our first activities was to send a letter to the uh, foreign minister of the Russian Federation asking for the release of Trevor Reed. He's an American who's been detained in Russia since the summer of 2019. He grew up in California, so we felt obliged to reach out and speak up on his behalf for his immediate release. Another thing that, uh, you know, kind of a tragic story that just recently happened, we're following closely the events uh, surrounding the death of a California uh, a young California woman uh, who was, was killed here in Russia just the past week. So I'd just like to um, express our condolences to the family of Catherine and her mother, Becky. Thank and, you. Yeah, it's just very, it's very uh, a sad story that, you know, a Californian who's been living and, and studying in Russia. You know, 30 seconds. Lost her life. So we do those kind of things here in Russia through the Embassy and Culture Center. And now I'm running for governor because we want to make California an independent country. So if you're out there and you support the idea that California can be more than just a state in the union, visit calixatgovernor.com and we will make California an independent country. James, you are the last in two minutes. How would you like to present yourself? Politics today pretty much <clears throat> is about personal power, about nationalism, and about economism. Because of that, we hear questions from politicians like, are you better off today than you were four years ago? We would never hear questions like, are you a better person than you were four years ago? And how has government helped you? And we hear lines like, it's the economy, stupid. Well, what we don't hear is something like, it's the humanity, politicians. It's the humanity. 
Now, there are all kinds of test cases. And an interesting test case is the question of an independent California. Supposing California were independent, I would be looking to see if there would be any real progress towards the consistent ethics of life. I would be looking to see if there was any real progress towards an understanding of the common good is excluding no one. And economics do matter, so I would be looking to see uh, were California independent if there were more or less economic inequality. And I certainly would be looking to see if there are more gated upscale enclaves. I'd be looking to see whether there's more or less educational inequality, and I'd count the number of casinos. I'd also be looking to see, and this is a question of solidarity, would there be an independent California more or less regard for the states left behind? Say the people of Mississippi. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all candidates. You've answered a variety of questions from known reporters and uh, journalists. Uh, we hope that they will see these things as the recall candidate debates continue in popularity. Please spread word. Please tell other candidates to come on out. We would love to have them here. And please tell the public these are the only place where you can see debate of all the candidates and we're up to half of the registered candidates with no other realistic option out there other than this one. Thank you very much. I will close the studio now and I will send you an email of the video shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.